Okay, now it's time to add how to add resources. Again, remember, uh, each of you has a blog, so let's uh, to add resources. I'm first gonna do again what we did already, which is add a new topic and modify the title and add a little bit of summary. So in this uh, short module, we're going to add resources. So we won't cover it all in this short video, but kind of the goal is to go over the key elements, which are key elements, which are the forums, the quizzes, the assignments, the workshops, the, um, the feedback now as well, which is a survey. So turn it in and uploads, which is files, folders, and finally URLs. So there are many other things within Mojo. But instead of focusing on everything within Moodle, let's focus on the things that are you're most likely to use. Um, the reason we're doing this is because Moodle can take a long, long time to get used to it and familiarize yourself with all the tools that it has. Uh, so instead of trying to do everything, let's just focus on some of the key elements. And let's uh, go ahead and invent this a little bit. Good. Okay. So that's the goal for this video. So let's start. I didn't put it in any particular order. And also, you may have noticed that when we, I was going over the little icons that I missed the last one, that was on purpose. You can add groups, you can use a great book. There are other elements that I'll go after the adding resources or activities. But um, to add resources or activities, pretty simple. You click on add an activity or resource. You have a menu here that kind of tells you um, what they can do. So for this video, as the first one, let's do an upload. And we're going to use a resource. The menu is divided into two activities and resources. Um, you know, every Moodle install devices in the same way, but this is a good way to divide them activities and resources. So we'll add a file resource. This is going to be manual, let's say, or PDF. You don't have to add a description. One of the key parts here is you don't have to add everything that is asked of you. There are many other things here that I am not really going to focus on right now. Again, you can even hide the advanced settings if you want to, but there's just advanced settings. So it's good to read them the first time carefully. Why? Because they might be useful in the future, and it's good to know that they're there. But for the most part, you won't be using them. Um, so to add a resource, you have a drag and drop folder. So let's do that right now. Let's first drop a PDF there. Okay, so all I did was grab it from my desktop and drop it. I could even add more than one. Now, if you add more than one, it's you should use a folder. Uh, one of the reasons why you may want to add more than one as a file is that let's say you're adding an HTML, and that HTML links to other subfiles. So then you're still adding a file, it's just that it has subfiles. So in that case, you place set to main file. But in the most, for the most part, you won't be doing that. So um, Use a folder for a folder and use a file for a file. In this case, we added one article, return to course, and there it is. So if I were to click on it now, it loads up the PDF that I added to my course. Let's do that again, but this time we're not going to do it in that same way. We're going to use the file system that it has. So instead of the drag and drop, we're going to call it PDF2. And we're going to click Add, choose a file. Let's look now here for PDF, PNGs, JPEGs, PDF. Good. Okay, you can set another Save As. You can choose your license. Um, if you don't mind sharing it, try to use a Creative Commons license. It's good to share uh, if you can, um, so that other people can then modify it. Creative Commons is it's a subtopic. I'm not going to go into it right now, but if you don't know about Creative Commons, they can help in increasing the amount of open educational resources that are available for other educators to use. So right now we'll keep all rights reserved because I don't own the rights to this document. So you can only modify the rights of things you own. If you don't own them, then you can't really change the rights to them. I mean, if you're making a derivative of something that was already shared with a Creative Commons license, then you can go ahead and modify the license because it was shared under an open license. But if something was shared under all, or it wasn't shared, it had all rights reserved, then you are technically not allowed to make a derivative unless you're using fair use. And even in that case, uh, you can't really set the, the legal um, 
uh, the code or the license for that new item either. So that's something to take into account. So okay, I added a new PDF. Options here that you may want to look at is do you want it to open a new window? A new window is a new tab basically. Or do you want it to open in a frame? The last one, open in a new window. If you remember, it opened up a different page. In this case, just to do something different, we'll use in frame. Uh, we'll keep that the same. You can show it to a group of students, not every student, and you can restrict access, um, or you can even have it so it's based on a great condition. We're not going to mess with that. Most people don't mess with that. Um, so again, we now have the two PDFs. If I open the first one, look, it open a new tab. The first one opened a new tab. It didn't open on the same page um, as the file. It, it created a new page for it. In this case, it opened in the same tab. You can see here it kept the Moodle frame. It didn't go out of the Moodle frame. I'm still within Moodle and it's slowly loading the file. So those are two ways you can load it up. Uh, some browsers prefer one way or another. The preferred browser is Firefox. So now that I have done that, I want you to do that within your topic. Again, it's one topic per person. Topic 5, topic 6, topic 7, topic 8, topic 9. Uh, pick your topic. Uh, if there are more people, we add more topics. But in your topic, add a couple of resources. Uh, while you're adding them, I'm going to show you that you can add other things. So let's now add quickly a Word document and let's add an image. So let's add Word. Any type of file. Whether you have a viewer or not for it, that, that varies. So um, actually, let's just go this time with a, a PowerPoint. I put Word, but I'm going to change that. So let's put PowerPoint. Okay. You don't have to name it PowerPoint. I could have named it PLE if I wanted to. I'm just naming it PowerPoint because it's the file type that it is. If you notice, the icon changes. So that's a PDF icon, that's the PowerPoint icon. That's something Moodle has done for a while, that it matches the icon to the file type. Okay, so now let's do Excel, or let's do an image. I could just add an image through here, but then this is the description, and that's not what I want. I want to add it as a separate file. Why? Because the description in this type of activity doesn't show um, what I want it to show. So it shows up, you remember when it has a frame, it would show up at the top, but it's not the main um, thing, the main item or um, file you're uploading. It's just, so now I uploaded an image, if I click on it, it opens up the image, which is a screenshot. Great, so um, I added four types of files. Again, any type of file, it could be a zip file, it could be a PDF, it could be an image, it could be a video, it could be an audio file, it could be uh, a torrents file, it could be anything. Of course, a torrents file, I mean the one that links to a torrent. Um, it could be whatever you want to. One thing with Moodle is if the file's too big, over a gigabyte, don't use Moodle for it. Uh, and I'm saying a gigabyte because we have good resources at the University of Minnesota. But in general, I would say no more than 10 megabytes. There are other services for them. If it's a video, go to YouTube. Again, if it's a large file, upload it to YouTube or Media Mail if it's a video file. If it's a large image, maybe try Flickr and then link into it. Try a um, photo bucket. Try even Facebook maybe, but Facebook tends to be a little bit private. But maybe even Google Plus now and, and their Picasa type uh, tools. So you can add them in a different place, Instagram. Uh, if it's uh, an audio, maybe try SoundCloud. If it's uh, you know, just the, whatever file type it is, if it's a PDF, I would definitely recommend SlideShare. It's owned by LinkedIn, and they're great. Um, it's a good way to meet other people that have great presentations, to get good ideas about how to make a good PowerPoint presentation. So if you haven't gone, that's my last tip in this short video, is go to SlideShare.net and try to place your PowerPoints there if you, if you want to share them with a wider audience. That's what I do. So here are my uploads. And you know you get sometimes hundreds of views, sometimes more, uh, thousands of views. So it allows you to share what you make uh, with a broader audience. Um, I think it's helpful to to have a community, and it allows you to add audio to them. And, and the nice thing about it is, let's say we open one of them, um, we're able to, you know, you don't have to. Student doesn't have to download the whole presentation; they can stream it. So let's uh, let's use the embed code, for example. So 
So there is the PowerPoint. Again, uh, that I just used the label, so that's not what we're practicing right now. We're practicing only file uploads, um, but there are other things you can do. We'll go over that soon. Thanks.